Go. Go. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. And that's what happens when I don't pay attention to my wife. So uh, tonight we are going to have a little bit of fun as we're getting close to Christmas time. We are going to make a quick and easy Christmas gift. This is something that if you're in a rush and you need it and you have a few minutes and your person you're giving it to is a bookworm, then this is the perfect gift that you can make. Um, and we're going to be having a lot of fun. It is a single hand or a one hand book holder so that you can easily hold a book in one hand and keep the pages open. Um, and we're going to have uh, a good time with this. Now, don't tell my wife, but this is a <laughs> gift for her. Uh, so we're going to keep it a little secret just between you and me. She doesn't have to know. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get going, I want to actually do a, uh, a, a, I want to let you guys pick the wood that we're going to be using. So I have a few options here and I thought I would let you guys see them. You mean you're not just you defaulting to. to white oak? I know. And only, <laughs> uh, only one of these is actually white oak. So oh. this should actually be rather interesting <laughs> but here let me give you these ones uh, Ooh, wow we're out of focus let me bring that back in there we go so first up we have of course white oak but not just any white oak this is the really curly white oak and when blo hits that it just explodes with color um, but it's a thinner one so it might not be as good but now yeah, for smaller hands like my wife has that might be fun uh, this one is ipe a very very hard dense wood this actually came off of sv seeker um, so it was a scrap I, I got from him while I was there. Then we have uh, Live Oak. This is a scrap from the mallets that I was working on. So this is actually from uh, Tally Ho. And a lot of good figure in that as well. But that one would be a little bit thicker one. Um, then this one is Peruvian Walnut. And as you can tell, this is a great chance to use some of these wild scraps. Uh, but it works very much like regular walnut, but a little bit cleaner grain. Um, so a little bit more brown than dark. Then we have a Paduk, which is a bright red wood, a little thinner one as well. And then this one, which I have no idea what it is, it works like an ash, it looks like an oak, um, but I don't know what the wood is, and I, it was just a scrap I was given a while ago. I'm guessing it is some type of oak because it looks like there's some ray work in there, um, but it doesn't quite feel like the red or white oak I've played with in the past. So if any of you have uh, ideas on which one we should use, uh, post it in the comments below, but my wife may pick which one she wants, so uh, <laughs> we will see. Do you have any choices? Hi, uh, Aubrey Kuhn put Brazilian rosewood, but I don't think that was... No, Brazilian and walnut. And then someone said... Uh, or, no, not Brazilian walnut. What is it? Peruvian walnut, yes. Yes. No, they're not being very helpful right now. <laughs> when is the live chat ever really helpful? <laughs> Um, because if no one else picks, then I will. They I said, you didn't say, is it Ipe, Epe? Ipe. Is that one of the choices? Yes, that's this one. Okay. It's a very, very dense hardwood. Um, okay, now interesting grain. we're just getting, oily. okay, so I have three Ipe's, one walnut or paduk, and one live oak. Uh-huh. So give them a minute. They yeah, might... well, we will. Um, so, um... Well, I'm, while we're thinking about that, I was just about to say something. Yeah, we've had some interesting things going on in the shop. Um, I'm doing this whole week, I'm going to be doing small Christmas gifts. Um, so we'll be doing some other videos on little hand puzzles and things like that that you can uh, make. And I had Luke here today. We we're shooting several videos on several of those. Um, also, a video coming out where we're doing handles for a knife. Um, oh, no. I dripped out epoxy onto my bench. Hmm, nice. First time I've ever dripped out anything under my my shop, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never done that before, ever. Um, oh, oh, and the big thing. Here, let me show you this. Um, let me see if I can show you this. Lord. Whoa. Ah! <laughs> Here, there is. This, this is the table to uh, the scroll saw. So I've actually started the reworking of the scroll saw. Um, and you can see on this... We have, oops, as long as I stop moving, uh, we have the treadle pedals down here uh, that I, um, Ed cast for me. He actually has one of these complete, and so he used his as a pattern and cast a pair for me. Um, so hopefully this will be getting up and running here soon. I still have to make the flywheel for it, and that should be a very interesting video, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's some of the odd things going on in the shop. Um, Let's see, do we have a, an option so far? Well, CC Farmer is 
at least one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven times at least said Ipe. Ipe? Ipe, whatever. I'm going to say it wrong <laughs> all night. There's a couple walnuts, a couple tally ho in there. Those are the big. Do you have a preference? Because it's for you. Do I have a preference? Oh, yeah, I have a preference. No, I don't care. <laughs> well, Something then let's... that will feel nice. Then let's, oh, uh, well, for feel nice. Well, th that is important. Okay. Well, then let me let me actually bring this around to you. And then why do we? That still only counts as one. That's right, B Power. <laughs> <laughs> still only counts as one. Name that movie. Last four more generations of rights. I don't know what's scarier that it'll last four generations so that our children will reproduce. Here, oop. Oh, let me grab while I'm at it some calipers mm -hmm. so that I can measure your thumb. <laughs> so here we go. Yes, I have a hitchhiker thumb. So Ipe, though, is a very heavy wood. So I don't know if that... Holy macaroni. ...will interest you. Uh, whereas lightweight, I think the Peruvian walnut is that. Uh, whereas these two have the most grain and figure. You have the live oak and the white oak. that's precisely what I always look at. <laughs> Ipe, Ipe. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. He keeps throwing it out there. See, how big is my thumb? My thumb is 0 .87. What is your thumb here? Hold on. Your thumb. And her thumb is 0 .76. So three-quarter inch hole, that was seven-eighths inch hole. Do you have a preference? Well, it looks like Ipe is I was going to say, do, do I really get a choice? When... I, I think so many people have been asking <laughs> to see Ipe. Now, Ipe is a very interesting wood. Um, it's not a hand tool friendly wood, um, which is why I was kind of reticent to even Just put it make out. one from each wood. <laughs> yeah, I may, I may end up because they're, they're relatively quick. And if I don't have the camera on, I can make one of these in you know, 20 minutes or so. <sighs> Ipe. Mm, okay, so we're going to have some fun with this. Maybe I might actually make two tonight. We'll see. Um, I was going to say, my second would probably be the Peruvian walnut. Peruvian walnut? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a simple one out of the Ipe. And I will do a little bit more ornate one out of the Peruvian walnut. See if we have enough time for that. Um, so first thing I want to do is drill the hole for the thumb to go in. And then we can base everything else off of that. And since Sarah's thumb is approximately three quarters of an inch. Now you know. Yes. <laughs> my wife's thumb is three quarters of an inch. This is a valuable piece of information. <laughs> um, oh, why do we still use the English system? So three quarters is... Uh, it's like uh, two centimeters. No, six is 12, 60, six, 12 sixteenths. Um, so that's a number 12 on here. So uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. So that is the diameter of our thumb. So I'm going to go one larger to this one, which that spur is bad. I might have to sharpen that up a little bit. And so that is a number 13 or 13 sixteenths. Here, while we're doing this, let me show you what I do to sharpen an auger bit. Um, and this one actually has, where was it? There's a bit of junk on this spur. And so this is out of focus. Actually, it's in focus, just not focus. There we go. Um, this has a safe side on here and a file side on here. So I'm actually going to sharpen up this spur a little bit because it was bent over and you always sharpen the inside of the spur never sharpen the outside if you sharpen the outside you change the diameter of the, of the bit and then while i'm at it i'm just going to sharpen the blade a little bit especially if i'm going to be working in ipe i want this to be good and sharp Ipe is not an easy wood to work with. There, now we have a good sharp blade that should dig through that Ipe, should dig through that Ipe, we will see. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna want this to be about four inches wide. Uh, so I'm gonna find, and this already has a bunch of holes left on it from uh, SV Seeker, so I'm gonna find one, put it in my vise. And drill a hole. It really doesn't matter where you drill it. You okay, can make it fairly random. Really see what you're doing. Just I'll switch back over. Sorry. 
two. Oop. There we go. Focus a little better. There we go. And then drill a hole. Why did you guys have to say Epe? Epe of all woods. You. Why did I even put it out there? I was going to say, there? why did you put it out there? So I'm going to pick. That's okay. We're all one. talking about Lord of the Rings over. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to drill a hole. And Epe is a lot of work. And through a little ways on this side. Then I'm going to turn it over. Go through the rest of the way on the other side, and that way I don't blow out and chip it all out. Because Epe is a very um, temperamental wood in that the grain splinters out very easily. And unfortunately, my lead screw isn't grabbing anymore, so I gotta force it more. Okay, let's get the gut behind this so I can actually drill through this. Because there was already a hole there, now the lead screw isn't pulling it through the wood. So I actually have to put more force into it because nothing is driving it in. So to put more force in it, I can use my gut and drill this way. There we go. Ta-da, we've got our hole. And before I go too much farther, I'm gonna clean up that hole with a file. Just get rid of any of the burrs on the inside because she will be having her thumb in there. We don't need my wife getting any splinters. Unless you want splinters. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. Yeah, and if Marcus is in the group, I don't know if he will. He's in Germany. I was planning on doing this one a while ago, but then he suggested it. And so... He suggested it He gave for me a the... Uh, no, he, just he a... sent me an email with one and kind of gave me the push, and I said, okay, oh. fine, I'll do it now. So he's the reason we're doing this tonight. There we go. That feels really good. Won't be able to get my thumb in there, but you should be able to get yours in. Now... We need to draw a pattern on this one. In this one, I'm just going to create a diamond shape on here. Let me give you a little bit better image on this. And you don't need to get terribly fancy. You just need a diamond shape to, uh, well, here, if this side goes that way, then this side, let's go this way. And then this side can go this way. And this side can go like that. I'm just eyeballing this. It's just for my wife, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I love you, babe. Yeah. Just like that. And now we need to cut this out. So I'm going to put it here in the vise and cut vertically. Ah, and this will be an interesting one because cutting at an angle, in particular like this, I'm going to be starting my cut on a corner here. I'm going to use a rip saw. And then we'll move the camera over here a little bit better so you can see this. Setting it up on a corner is notoriously difficult for hand tools. But and it so wouldn't be wood by right if we didn't. <laughs> if we didn't what? Do the most difficult thing possible. Yes. <laughs> and so I'm just going to lightly scratch in here. I'm using my thumb. It's actually sliding on my thumb. And I'm using that to guide it on the other side. And once I actually have this groove in, then I can cut right down my line. Ah, oh, Ipe. Woo! Didn't want to do that. You didn't. Here's one cut. Now Ipe 
is a very dense, very hard wood. And if you ever go to Australia, you won't find Ipe there, but you'll find a lot of other woods like it. Or, no, Ipe is South American, that's right. Now on this one, I'm gonna start it at 90 degrees to the actual cut. <laughs> and it gives me a little nick that I can work in. And with it sliding, I'm gonna slowly bring it up to the angle it needs to be at. There's that one. Except for now it's binding a little bit. Good way to lose a thumb. If ever you're pushing and it's catching like that, it's usually because you're putting too much force into the wood with your hand. You can actually lift up on the saw and uh, push myself a bit. So let's cut this one down. There's two cuts. Now for the last one, I actually made a cut all the way down this. So let's extend that line up. Any questions so far or anything uh, I should there know? There was, let's see. Or is just the audience being the normal the audience? Oh, that's part of it. <laughs> um, uh, Abrakun says, wow, that's some soft Ipe. Uh, Abrakun had said, drill a hole and keyhole up for when you were starting your cut. What's that? Hang on, where'd it go? They said drill a hole and keyhole up when you were talking about cutting in the corner. Drill a hole and I don't keyhole know, that's up. what it says. I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know. Um, there was one other question. So to cut all the way down this, I'm getting the big guns out. This is a 5 PPI handsaw. It is way overkill for okay. this, but I like it. It's my favorite saw. got our basic design so you can put your thumb in there and hold the book open but that is not clean enough or pretty enough for my wife because she is a clean and pretty woman so we're going to clean this up and of course it's ePay so, so it's going to be Kuhn said a keyhole saw to meet the corner a keyhole saw is this to meet the corner Oh, I see what you're saying. So you could actually come in this way and cut up. Uh, you could, rather than cutting all the way down. Um, I just like my big handsaw, so it uh, doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, keyhole saw. And I'll actually be using one, I'll be using this on a video coming up soon, because um, it's a very useful tool. All right, so Gary Doyen, Doyon said, is that a rip saw? I know you used the rip saw first, but the second saw you used... No, uh, they're all... Well, yeah, no, they're all rip saw, yeah. They're all rip saw, okay. Yeah. Um, plane. I'm going to grab my smoothing plane and smooth it out. Really fine little curls. Ipe, if you take too heavy of a bite, it will bite you back. So slow and steady, light cuts are what you're looking for. Need to be a little higher angle here. <laughs> How do you like them pay curls? Underbar. And this one. I was going to take a picture of the wood curl upstairs earlier and post it, but I forgot. Take a picture of what? Of the wood wood curl we were talking about oh, yeah. last week. And before we go any farther, I'm going to oil up the sole a little bit. 
I use a paste wax, homemade paste wax boiled linseed oil, or excuse me, raw linseed oil for my sole here. Allows it to ride a little bit smoother. Just like that. So now we have roughed out diamond shape. I want to actually clean this up so we don't have sharp edges on here. So I'm going to grab a block plane. Rather than doing that, I'm going to hold the block plane in place, slide the wood over it. Sometimes with small pieces, that's actually easier. Oh, and this block plane is messed up. I gotta get a different one. Whew, you're too much. So, that one's cutting a little too heavy. Lighten the cut up. Oop, wrong way. Can I ask you a question while you're doing that? Sure, yeah. So, Ashton Fitzgerald says Does that larger plane have an adjustable throat? Yes, it does. This is a Veritas uh, custom plane. And one of the nice things is you can uh, open and close the mouth just like you would with a low angle plane, which is an ingenious thing that I wish other plane companies would also do. We forgot to do our little setup with my uh, question cut and paste thing. I just realized that. With what? My little document. Oh, Cause the yeah, sorry. Because the computer rebooted right before. Yeah. That. My the RAM on my computer is dying. So if we suddenly disappear, it's probably because my computer RAM suddenly just decided to give out again. Uh, sorry, I have new RAM coming any day now. Just haven't had the chance to do it yet. So there won't be a thing with questions tonight. Oh well. Just gonna clean up all these edges. There are eight of them. That's two done. three and so you can see with this design it's relatively quick and easy if this were an e-pay I'd be done by now e-pay just makes everything a little bit more interesting <laughs> yeah I would hate to have to chop down e-pay tree that would be oh my word <laughs> I, I don't know how much work that would be um, I guess there's a reason I don't live in the Amazon jungle. Yes, I'm sure that's the primary Just because I don't have to, I don't want to chop down Ipe <laughs> trees, because you know everyone in the Amazon jungle has to chop down an Ipe tree. <laughs> Any other questions while I'm finishing this? Yes, Bill Wheaton, no, not Bill Wheaton, Imagine says, uh, the question is rather unrelated to this project, but what are your thoughts on an end vice versus a face vice? Um, well, it depends. Uh, if you're talking about like a wagon vice, because I have here basically a face vise on my end and I use my face vise like an end vise in that I have a row of dogs here. Um, if it's just a wagon vise with just a, a dog hole pusher, I'm not a huge fan of those, but I do love this face vise end vise all as one. This is what I use more than anything else because it's just such a versatile vise. I can use it in a hundred different ways. Uh, but if you're talking about a regular face vise or a wagon vise, I'd rather have a regular face vise than a wagon vise. Personal preference though, everyone's a little different. Now that, now that I've cleaned out the outside edges, I'm going to take a knife in here and I'm going to clean off the inside edge just so it feels a little smoother. Because I don't want my wife getting splinters. And you always have to remember your grain direction. So you're working it in quarters. So you're doing one quarter and then you switch around to the other corner so that you can always be following the grain direction rather than getting chunks chipped out. Is it bad that it kind of is reminding me of Harry Potter? Harry Potter, why? You know, the, not, um, oh, the three thingies. Oh, the three hollows? Hollows, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the deathly hollows. The three thingies, I know, very technical. 
I don't see it, but okay. Oh, it kind of looks like if you put them all together a little bit, but whatever. One Wouldn't more corner? a rounded file be easier? <laughs> I cast that. And then I just wrap this in boiled linseed oil and it'd be done. Except for in this case, I'm going to smooth off this face a little bit more. So I'm going to clamp this back in here. Put a couple passes on here. So Colin McLaughlin wants to know, what is the best wood to use to bring out the grain? To bring, it, bring out the grain? Mm -hmm. well, you can bring out the grain in any wood. Um, I like curly white oak, personally. The, the grain in that is just unmatched by anything else, uh, but personal preference. So and This corner is a little bit sharp, so I'm just going to dull that off a little bit. Just use a file. And it's done, basically. Well, Dip it in yeah. some boiled linseed oil, let it sit, and there you go. So yeah, you want to try one with the Peruvian and actually make it look funky? Well, I want to feel that one first. Oh, you want to feel it? Okay, well here, let me do this. It's not like it's going to get wrapped in a bow tie or anything. Yes, okay, everyone, we're going to present this to my wife. She doesn't know what's coming. <laughs> uh, this is a, 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 a special <laughs> present. Let's, let's see what she thinks. Here, open your package. What could it be? <laughs> it's almost too long. I need a book. We don't have any books down here, do we? Ha! Ah, ha ha. Hang on. You found a splinter? I found, yeah, right there. Yeah, see, that's one of the problems with E-Play is the splinters. Oh, yeah, I gotta clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's try the Peruvian walnut. Yeah, let's. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we've, we've been doing it's this. It's interesting. With all my talking, and it's 29 minutes in, so. Isn't actually, it left-handed or right-handed? Right. Ha 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 Yes. <laughs> Oop, camera's up. Ambidextrous. Uh, so. That's that one. Next thing I want to do is this one. Um, and this is a little bit lighter weight wood. Um, Can you make it no, not? No, that's not. Hmm. I don't mm. know what that is now. It is not Peruvian walnut. I don't know what it is. But it looks pretty. It's kind of similar. Can I what? Well, that just felt really long. Yes, this next one's going to be a little bit more ornate and shape. What was that? Because rather than just making it in a diamond shape, this one we're actually going to make in a pretty shape. Is this so, the one that they said that they're all saying one of them's going to end up with elvish carving on it? Probably. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. I never do anything quite like that. So the first thing I want to do is smooth it out. Do a little heavier cut though. Yeah, that's a heavier cut. So I'll switch cameras back. Two. I have a question. When you're What's ready. that? So Aubrey Kuhn says, between projects, have you considered ever using a sanding drum or wheel chucked up in the post drill? Also, would the original post drill chuck accommodate an end mill? Uh, yes and yes and no. Uh, yes, you could put a uh, bit in there, um, but I don't know if you'd really want to. Um, it, cause yeah, it, it doesn't work like a drill press because every crank also advance it down, advances it down. Um, so as you're cranking, you're also causing the, the, the drill bit to go down and it's not just turning the drill bit round. Um, so it's, it's a very different thing, but no, I've never really wanted to put a sanding drum in there. It would be an interesting video, though. <laughs> so uh, first things first, let's drill the hole again. Because a lot of times if you drill your pattern and then you find out where the hole needs to be, if the hole is slightly off one way or the other, it causes it, it just doesn't look right. Whereas if you drill your hole first, then you know exactly where it's going to be and you don't have to worry about it. So let's put our hole right <laughs> there and drill it out. Careful, this is a really boring job. They already beat you to that joke. Oh, they did? Oh, shoot. I'm getting, uh, getting slow in my old age. <laughs> oh, yeah, and so some of you know I'm, uh, I'm working on setting up 
a, uh, a control thing so that you guys can control lights in the shop for the lives um, through using uh, super chats. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking about doing like colored lights or strobes or other things like that. So if there's something you want to see where you're like, oh yeah, I'd love to control that with a super chat, let me know. I'm going to smooth out the inside. Just like butter. Like one of my kids' baby's bottoms. <laughs> Probably didn't come out quite the way I wanted to say it. <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> And why do you tune in to live, live videos? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, let us draw the pattern that we want on here. And I want to do something more interesting. So I'm going to draw a center line on here that I can come off of. And then I'm going to make the book holder. And it tends to go something like that and uh, let's do that uh, well what's the word but rather than just having straight sides like the last one did and having a diamond shape I want this one actually to sw slope in a little bit so let me parallel these back a little bit make it a little thinner And so I'm, I'm just playing with the shape. You can make it anything you want. And if you go online and search for these, you're going to see a whole bunch of different shapes. And so as this gets closer, here, let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about here. Ooh, ducktails. <laughs> there we go. So rather than just having straight sides here, I actually want it to come out here to a point. So I'm going to start sloping it like that because that's the shape that the book binding makes so let's do something like that Does that look about right this one looks a little bit more so let's do something like there that looks about right and then on the back we can do something a little bit more natural or unnatural I don't know what you would call it organic Let's find a circle that's a little bigger. Let's go on to this one. Let's go like that. And then from you over to you. And then from you over to you. And do something like that shape. So that is a lot more difficult to cut out. Uh, let me see, you were talking about this one being too long. Let me actually make that one a little bit smaller, but I'll do that once we actually get to it. So I want to cut this out. I'm going to do that with a scroll saw. And for that, oh, not a scroll saw. I would love to do it with a scroll saw. Have I been on this camera the whole time? Oh. Honestly, I don't know. I was talking there about something. Sorry, I just switched over. Um, I'm going to pull out my bird's mouth. And if you watched the cutting board video I had recently, I was using this. And this allows you to use a coping saw or a, a saw to get closer, bring it up to your height. Let me move this over a little bit so you can I was see. I say, we can't. This a little sure. bit. Maybe, whoa! whoa. <laughs> I thought you ended up on like this. Well, I, I need the cord was wrapped around, so I had to go the other direction. And then let's bring <laughs> this one up higher. Oop. This is the one that's a pain to raise. Oh, because the cable's attached. I guess I can't raise it up any higher. Oh, here, let's do it this way. What are hey. you doing? I'm trying to get this <laughs> camera up higher so that you can see what's on top of this bird's mouth. I tried to get Luke to stay around a little later today, but uh, he had to get home, so no camera day guy today. Maybe one of these days. All right, there we go. Now we can actually see what's up on top of this bird's mouth. So camera two, two, come on, give me two. I am on two. <laughs> Put that up. 
Now I can actually bring in the coping saw <laughs> and start cutting in here. So just like a skull saw, but far easier to make. Back that out, go the other way. Any questions while I'm working on this? No, we're actually talking about shooting your ashes into space to get way oh. off topic. <laughs> what brought that on? Uh, what's the Aubrey Coon said? Um, Later on, it's revealed James actually has his hand tool workshop on a space station he built himself. And then I said, you're not far off. And it's talked yeah. about when you die, you want to be cremated and shot into space. Yeah, turn you know, the blade. Because we have those kind of conversations around here. Yep, we do. And then we got on the topic of lights and disco ball for super chats. So. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing like a disco ball that falls from the ceiling or I don't know. I'd love to hear your ideas. What there's, what's something special you'd like to see for a super chat? Something more than me just doing a sad dance. <laughs> well, I don't know. That might be more valuable to some people. <laughs> Blackmail for years down the road. Is it blackmail when it's all over YouTube? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good start. <There> you go. <laughs> Sorry if I'm in your camera view. Here, yeah, let's move it around this really. way. Here we go. We should have a warning like kids don't try this at home why well when they start saying the comments of that looks dangerous i just feel like there should be a disclaimer almost there almost there shape cut out and it is a mess but hey we know how to fix it up so let's get rid of the bird's mouth switch back over to this for a minute i love how the osha guys come out when you do things like that what anything that's semi-dangerous what was semi-dangerous using your hand oh yeah because yeah. you have to imagine what they're seeing it's just yeah, your it's hand a, and you looking the like camera angle, everything is so close <laughs> Well, that's, that's actually one of the nice things about the bird's mouth is because it has this circle here, um, as long as you keep your hand out of that shape, you're not going to be hitting it, or at least not for a while. As you can see, I cut for a few times, which is like, why isn't it going anywhere? Oh, it's because you're cutting into the frame underneath. But yeah. No, especially from the camera angle, it looks like my hand is right there. So let's use a rasp and start cleaning up this shape a little bit. And back to two, so you can see my face. <laughs> yeah. I had to. And I get to wake up to that every morning. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ooh. Too far down. Don't push with the rasp. Let it do the work. 
I have to keep telling myself that because I have a tendency to want to push with everything I've got to carve down. But a rasp, if it's a good rasp, will do the work for you. You just have to tell it where to do the work. Clean that out. Now those are just for the two flat sides. For the other sides that are rounded, I'm actually going to skip straight to a file. Um, use this one and this one. You can never have enough files or rasp. And then out here I can use the flat side, it's a flat section. Clean that out. Any questions while I'm working on this? Uh, so Nick Vesquez just asked, why do you prefer hand tools over power tools? Um, quieter, safer for the kids, less dust, less PPE needed, can use them in a smaller shop. Um, if I weren't have, if I didn't have a hand tool channel, I probably would have a hybrid shop, uh, half power tool, half hand tool. Um, I, I really don't have a problem with power tool. I just I have a, a YouTube channel. It's all about hand tools, so that's why I have all hand tools. <laughs> and then Zifnab says, "Can we see some carving on Epe?" Yeah, yeah, we'll do that before we go. And the refining of this shouldn't take <laughs> that long. Just cleaning up that shoulder. Take my time. Do it right. Now technically a file just goes in one direction. It doesn't go in both. So if you don't want to get all those nasty YouTube comments, only use it one side, one direction, not both like this. Just a, uh, a note for some of you out there. But you do get more control if you just do it in one simple, smooth direction. Smaller TV. Cool. So there's the simple shape. Now I'm going to get a cleaner file, and there we are. And then with this one I can come in, just smooth it out a bit. And if I really wanted to I could come in with sandpaper and clean it up. And I'm going to ease off the corners. Can I ask you a question now? Sure. Raven's Path asks, what's the difference between a file and a rasp? Ooh, that's a really good question. A file has lines that go, let me show you, oh, here, oh, here. These combination files are a great way to do it. Um, the, the file here has lines that go all the way across the, uh, across the surface, and so they might be cross-hatched. Whereas a rasp has these teeth that stick out, and you actually, they're, they're punched in. Uh, so let me grab a bigger one and show you a clearer difference between file and rasp. This is a file. Lines go all the way across the plate. This is a rasp. Individual teeth that are picked out. Um, so that's the, the general dif dis difference between the two. Um, that's a good question. I want to do a video here soon on how to use files and rasps, where to get them, and all that type of stuff. Um, I'm, I just need to buy a couple more. I always need to buy a couple more. <laughs> but I want to show and demonstrate uh, some of them that I do not have. Um, otherwise, I have a video that's not as complete as I would like it to be. Let's see, I got that, I got that. Let's clean this up a little bit. Any other questions? And then CS245354. Nice name. I like that one. It makes me think of Les Miserables. But anyways, figured you would use sandpaper since it's for your wife. 
so just the thought process behind why not, I guess, maybe. Why I don't use sandpaper? Why you're not? The file is faster. Um, well, also, the, the file gives you a cleaner control, so you're not, with, with sandpaper, you tend to round everything over. Whereas with a file, you can, keep, you can keep a nice sharp edge. So if I wanted to put a chamfer on it with a file, it's very easy to do that. Whereas with sandpaper, it's very hard, even with a, with a hard wood backer, um, it's difficult to get a clean, sharp edge with sandpaper. And a file can give you just as, just as clean a surface, if not actually a little cleaner than sandpaper in some cases, unless you're going up to really high grits. And with sandpaper, you end up going through with a lot of grits. Um, but it's just a personal preference. I mean, there's nothing one way or the other. Um, I'm very comfortable with files. They last a lot longer than sandpaper. So um, files are far, far cheaper than sandpaper. Just going to feel it for any corners or nicks. So I don't know if you touched on this because I was trying to read a few other questions. Connor McKee asks, what is a file good at that a rasp is not, and what are rasps good at that a file is not? Um, a rasp and a file are, in woodworking, they're relatively the same thing. A rasp just tends to be a very aggressive cutter, and it's so it's like your 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 roughest grain. So like this would be your 50 grit sandpaper, and then you would have another rasp with smaller teeth like this that would be your 80 grit sandpaper, and then you'd start moving into your files that would be your, your 100 grit sandpaper. Um, and so a rasp is just a really aggressive cutter. Cuts off a lot of material very quickly, but leaves a rough surface. Um, whereas a files tend to have a much smoother surface. Almost there, let me just do the inside of this. 49, oh wow. So this has only been like 15 minutes so far in this piece, and we made this this far. So I'll see how it feels to her, and then we'll actually put some boil linseal on this. Oh, I got to do outside of that still. So Troy Jacobson asked, "Are you slash old rasps w worth picking up at a swap?" <laughs> uh, most of mine are. You can find these big buckets of, you know, a hundred rasps and files, and about half of them are okay. Um, the problem is when they bang together and they rub up against each other. They dull each other. They're very hard metal, um, but they will dull each other up. Now, that does mean that a, a dull file or rasp will still cut. It just won't cut as fast. Um, so, I mean, they're worth getting. And most of the time, they're better than the ones you get at the big box store. Especially if you see them with wooden handles, that's usually a good key that they're, they're, they're decent. Although most of the time, they don't even have handles. They just have the tang on there. Um, and I do generally suggest you get handles for them so you're not going to be garring yourself up, um, though it's not necessary. I've used them quite a bit without it. You just have to be more careful. Just smoothing this. Oh, i got to do the outside, too. You have another one? Um, Aubrey Kuhn asks, when will we see James use his diamond stones to polish wood? Uh, <laughs> that would... That would be an interesting one. I've never done that before. Um, I mean, you could, but I think that's taking a little too far. I think that's for the same people who go like four or 500 grit on their woodworking when they use sandpaper. Um, I've never quite understood that. I usually will stop at like 300 being my absolute max. Or if I can't get 300, like 320. Um, but yeah, just tighten this down, make that a little quicker. And then William Herpel asks, "Did you ever use power tools, or did you learn with all? Of, did you learn with all hand tools?" Um, I am more comfortable with power tools than I am with hand tools. I've, I've worked with power tools more of my life. Uh, hand tools is actually a newer portion of my life. Um, so, yes, um, this is um, growing up, and in all my other houses, I've had a power tool shop. All power tools. Hand tools is a very new, special thing for me. There, let's see how this feels to you. Because they can't see Oop. me already. Oh, here, we do this. It's a good thing I don't wear jammies when we do this. <laughs> here, see how that Never one feels. Know. That's not, it's a lot lighter, mm -hmm. so I personally like it. Do you have a book? Oh, here, let me grab a book. Uh, 
And of course, the book I'm going to grab is Calvin Hobbes, The Radio, Radio Woodworker by Roy Underhill. Here, see how that feels. <laughs> we haven't read that one in a while. Um, it's too. Oh, it's a big okay. book. It's not the book. It's more about getting it. Because I'm a pinky holder. <laughs> oh, you're used to holding your pinky I'm up in there? I'm used to holding my pinky. <laughs> and so, this is. I don't have big hands. You know. You, Oh, it'll be interesting to try in one of your, your smaller paperbacks. I mean, that's that's a little better, but see... Your pinky naturally wants to come up and around. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you don't want to keep the pinky on the back. No, but it's... I mean, it's easier holding it like that. Yeah, it's kind of a big book. I think if you got me a smaller book, it would yeah. feel better. Well, let's throw some finish on it and answer some questions. Well, this is useful information, though, if they wanted to make it for their wives. Yes, yes, this is information. Now, remember, I'm four foot ten. <laughs> My hands are the size of a... Yeah, your old, hand span is only, so like, what, six inches across? If barely. That... I can reach a full octave on a piano. You if can? That, I can. Really? No more than that. I didn't think you could. One octave. <laughs> okay, and since this is the Wood by Wright shop, what are we going to finish it with? Polyurethane! <laughs> Uh, where did I put? Oh, yes. Here is my homemade polyurethane. <laughs> now, boiled linseed oil. For something like this where you're going to feel it in your hand, there are few things as good as boiled linseed oil, especially because this is not going to be getting roughed up. It doesn't need protection. Uh, boiled linseed oil is fine. So I'm just going to dip it in here and let it sit, wipe it off. And I'm going to let this absorb as much as it wants to absorb. And I'll probably dunk it three or four times over the next hour and then rub it down with some paste wax and I have some homemade stuff that I use. Um, I have several videos on it as well. And just let that soak in and that will seal it up and you'll get this cool grain. Here, let me flip over cameras. Oh, now that I'm all covered in. Do you need my help? No, just wipe it off my pants. Okay. Yes, we have specific shot pants. Yes. Here. Focus. There we go. So you can see how that came out. The walnut. Here, oh, let me dunk That's the... That's kind of like uh, an anime head, too. Yeah. And let me dunk the... Uh, I'm going to focus it up. Yes, Is it Goku? Can. Is that So here's the Ipe. What? Was it Goku? Is that the name I'm thinking of? Uh, what, from uh, Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, Goku, but I don't know Yes, I have be. seen it. Yes, she watched DBZ with me. So here is the Ipe, and you can see how that just gets really, really dark, really nice I brown. like that color. But the end grain, especially if this one has a little bit of a tiger really grain see in it. it. Are you holding it too low? There, that's better. Oh, there you go. There's the e-pay for you. It's got a lot of texture to it. So I'm going to let these sit, let them soak up as much as they want, probably dunk them a couple more times. Actually, no, that's a little <laughs> 1950s more. car head on ornament. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'm just going to let them sit out and clean them off. I'm not going to I'm just saying. And yeah. they'll be done later. <laughs> Yes, just saying. <laughs> so, any questions? Um, yeah, so we made two presents no. in under 50 minutes. Look at that. Nerd alert, that's right. <laughs> With hand tools while doing a video. I bet I could make like five or six of them in an hour if I wasn't videoing. That would be kind of a fun challenge. So How many Brett, can you make in an hour? Brad's workbench says... What is your favorite wood to work? Um, favorite wood to work is different from my favorite wood. My favorite wood to work is probably walnut. Um, walnut or cherry? Walnut. Walnut is, is a little bit easier <laughs> okay. to work. Um, it's just a, a really smooth, very forgiving wood. It allows you to, to run through easily. Walnut's a really, really good one. Um, it's different from my favorite wood, but yeah. Well, we all know your face. Yeah, that's right. Peruvian Ipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else you got? Oh, apparently we're just all talking about woodworkers are all nerds. At, or there's a fair portion of... Oh, Dragon Ball Z <laughs> and such, yes. Well, we had Lord of the Rings. We had um, yeah. Les Mis up there. You well, know. I'm soon going to be hosting a... Uh, um, Star Trek Next Generation Murder Mystery Party. So that should be a very fun one. Um, if you've ever done a How to Host a Murder, those are always enjoyable. I'm just uh, waiting for a show where I can do 
It's called a lance. <laughs> oh, am I still on that one? Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, I didn't even yeah. notice. <laughs> that deck is boring. Although staring at these dry is not that bad. Quick, Star Trek talk before it ends. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions before we go? Yeah, live long and prosper. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I have to end that one this way. This one that way. Oh, they're all telling, they're all saying what kind of woods they would uh, like. So, um, I don't know. Well, you know, questions? I have to say, um, uh, um, what is it? Box Elder. Box Elder or um, Red Maple. Those are actually really easy woods to work. Um I, mean, I would say they're probably even easier than walnut. Uh, they, they're softer, though. So I think I would have to go with like a, a red maple, which is usually what soft maple is. Or any maple that's not hard maple is a soft maple. Um, but usually it's a red maple. That one's a, that one's a really easy wood to work with. Really easy wood to work with. Yeah. And then Bill Wheaton says, what other kinds of small projects like this? I, I, this seems to be a hit, so. Yeah, um, I want to do other ones like this. Uh, the videos this week are all going to be small gift projects like this, little trinket things that you can make very easily with hand tools. Um, I think Paul Sellers actually has a video on that where he makes um, hand propellers, and I've been thinking about making one of those as well. Um, there's, there's a bunch of little things like that you can make. Traditional toys. Um, if you look up traditional wooden toys, you're going to come across a bunch of things like this that are just really quick and easy. Um, or if you look up hand puzzle, um, or uh, um, wood puzzles, you'll, you'll find all sorts of things like that that are relatively easy to make and can go together fairly quickly. Phil says bookmarks. Bookmarks, yeah. yeah uh, How Coon. thin can you plane a piece of wood? <laughs> Aubrey Coon says, has James ever used a bow drill, the kind used in piano making? Um, th yes, I have. Do I have one? No. Um, I almost bought one uh, last month. And when I was down in Texas, there were two of them for sale, and I was like really close to buying one. Uh, they're a lot of fun, but uh, no, I don't have one. Yeah. Cool. Is that about it? Uh, yeah. Sweet. I think so. So this has been a lot of fun, and uh, thank you to those who have been watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If I didn't answer your question, uh, go ahead and send me an email. And we will... say one last one just popped up, and it was, have you ever worked with ebony? Yes, I have. I actually have some scraps of it up there. I almost worked with it today, um, but the piece wasn't quite big enough. It's uh, not an easy hand tool wood, but it does work. It's really hard to find the grain in that stuff because it's just so monotone black. But, yeah. Um, cool. I think that'll about do it. Uh, until next time, live long and prosper. <laughs> Bye.